All right, so today what we're going to talk about is the Google Core update and some of the latest updates. Recently, it's been about a week since the Core update was announced and there's been all sorts of crazy stuff going on. So let's get straight into it. And if you have any questions, feel free to chime in. If you're enjoying the video, please smash a like on it. So one of the craziest announcements that you might have seen this week whilst we're waiting for this Core update to roll out is actually Mediavine's new update on their advertising network. So I'm just gonna share my screen. I'll show you exactly what I mean. Now this is quite an interesting one. Scott Freeman says, Goldie baby, good to be back in the game. Thanks for watching Scott. Jaden says, yes, Julian. And Jason is on the call as well. Welcome everyone. Fahad says, hi baby. All right, <laughs> let's go. So this is the latest email from Mediavine. You might have received this yesterday if you're already on Mediavine scheme. But basically what they've said is that a new ad management solution is coming for websites that start around 10,000 monthly sessions. Now, this is quite interesting because basically there's a lot of SEOs out there who are sort of in that in-between section between Ezoic and between going to Mediavine. Mediavine requires 50,000 sessions a month and Ezoic requires a minimum, but you don't get paid as much from what I've seen. I think the CPMs are way higher with Mediavine. So this is using the same Mediavine technology, but it's gonna be launched on something called Journey, as you can see right here, and then you can sign up, which is pretty cool. Jaden says, I've heard about that, really good news. Yeah, I think that's great news for SEOs. And I wanna start this video, it's gonna be about the Google Core update, but I wanna start the video with some good news and you know keep everything positive while a lot of people are, are worried and that sort of thing. Now, Jason says, this can be answered later in the video, but I'm debating between SEMrush and Ahrefs. Can you explain your expertise and the difference and which is better? So personally, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. From what I've seen, Ahrefs has the best set of data, right? And that's typically why I use Ahrefs. Now, as well, if you're doing client work, then what you're going to find is that on, I don't know, let's open up a random website like neilpatel.com, right? What you're going to find on Ahrefs is that most clients want you to report back on domain rating, right? So if you're doing SEO for any sort of client, they're going to want you to give you domain rating. You don't get that on SEMrush. You might get something approximate, but it's not going to be the same. Now, I do think SEMrush has a lot of value, and even though it's free package, it's pretty, pretty good. But the problem is, I think that in terms of the quality of data, if you want to perform at SEO at the top, top level, for example, like we're doing it for a lot of clients, then I typically find Ahrefs is the best. However, it's a lot more expensive. So just bear that in mind. If you want to get the best, you have to pay for the best and you have to pay for your time or your money these days. Scott Freedom says, Ezoic is trying to sell me very hard aggressively. I use Ahrefs, but no affiliates program. Yeah, I think they scrapped their affiliate program a few years ago. So I do think SEMrush is pretty good, but I honestly, I'm, I'd agree with you. I think that Ahrefs is, is still the best if you're an SEO agency. But if you're a beginner, SEMrush, SE Ranking, these are all great tools to try and use. Now, in between the whole Google Core update, one thing you might have seen as well, I'm just going to search for it now, is the AI Act. Now, this is pretty interesting. This is quite a big development in the game, which is essentially the AI Act. Act is like the first ever legal framework on AI. And I was talking about this in my Facebook group earlier. If you haven't joined already, let me pull that up so you can check it out right here. This is the SEO Backlinks AI Chat GPT group. We've got like 6,600 members in there. And essentially, one of the things that I was talking about recently in this group was the AI Act. And what you'll see here is that they've basically said the AI Act, if I zoom in right there, I can't zoom in. Okay, I'll find this one, is that you basically need to you need to be very transparent in terms of how you use AI, right? So there's specific transparency obligations to ensure that humans are performed, informed when necessary, fostering trust, right? So there's not that much guidance on it yet, and I don't think it's being enforced, but what I would say is that potentially AI websites might have to mention that they actually use AI in content creation, which is probably fair enough, you know, as the content goes. MV Media says, the man, the myth, the legend, how are we? I'm absolutely doing fantastic. Thank you. Best day of my life. Great to see you here, MV Media. And yeah, we've got all sorts of crazy stuff going on. So let's keep going now. If you have any questions, by the way, and you need some help on anything, just, just feel free to, to post as we go along. One of the other things that I saw actually from the update, and I'll focus on the stuff that's winning right now, is this post by Ian that is pretty interesting. It got like 50K views a couple of days ago on Twitter. And it was basically talking about the winners from the 
core update and spam updates, right? So obviously Google released a core update, but at the same time, they've released a spam update. And as you can see right here, some websites are winning during this. It's quite interesting to see, okay, who's doing well. So for example, taming let's pull them up and we'll see how they're performing and what's going on there. But what you can actually see from a lot of these websites is a pretty high in DR, right? So that's a DR56. This one is a DR70. This one is a DR76. And you can see the traffic is going up like crazy. So it's pretty interesting to see that a lot of high DR websites are performing pretty well. Actually, that's a DR16. So that's a low DR site. But I would expect that more and more authority sites are going to be ranking now that AI is so prevalent because that's a way to differentiate from all the AI tools and all the AI content flooding the internet. And basically, we can go from there. Let's go on. MV says, my man, always quality. Keep it up. Thank you very much. And Mikhail says, what requirements of Ezoic? I have 13 blog posts with Gemini Advance. I don't have traffic. So honestly, if you're not getting traffic, I wouldn't even bother thinking about ads. Because the thing is, if you want to make any sort of decent money with ads, you want to get a decent amount of traffic, right? So for example, if you're getting like 50,000 sessions a month or even 10,000 sessions a month, you can get a decent amount of money depending on what sort of niche you're in. But if you're just not getting any traffic at all, there's no point even trying to monetize for ads right now. And also it might slow you down your website and that can you know, decrease the user experience, which hurts your rankings as well. So it's quite an interesting one. And Coding Shiksha says, do you also see these core updates affecting your YouTube channel, external traffic coming from Google? I have some spammy website links in description. Should I remove it? That's an interesting one. So. For me, I've actually not really seen any drop in traffic on my latest YouTube video. So let's say, for example, this one, you can see that if we go on this and it was just published a few hours ago, make sure you check it out if you, if you want to learn about keyword research. But you can see on this particular video, we're still getting a lot of traffic um, externally. In fact, I'm going to go back a bit further to the video from yesterday and we'll see where most of the traffic came from. And if it's like any of my other videos, it's probably getting most of its traffic from Google search. Yeah, so you can see. This is a good example of, of YouTube SEO, by the way. You can see that this website is getting 55% of its traffic from Google search. So I haven't really seen any drop in it. And you can see this web, this particular video, it actually got 4,400 traffic, and that's increasing nicely hour by hour. So yeah, I haven't seen a, a drop in traffic on videos, but I know that in terms of organic listings on websites, yeah, a lot of websites are taking a big hit right now. And Jose says, so our websites with more backlinks and better DR doing better since the core update. So it's, it's very early days, right? But if you look at a lot of sites performing well right now, I would say the, that most of them are getting pretty good traffic from, from having high DR, right? So if I'm actually going to pull up, where is it now? I'm going to pull up Glenn's report here. 16 websites dominate. If I can find it. There we go. This is it. This is a report, right? So basically, in terms of traffic, the 16 companies in the world that are dominating the world's Google search results. Now, that's quite interesting to look at because these are like 16 massive, massive brands, right? So for example, you can see right here, you've got a list of all the medias and all the sort of companies that are under each media company and their listings, right? So for example, you can see like Vogue over here, Blammer, Magazine, etc. massive, massive brands. What do massive brands have? They have a lot of authority and a lot of DR. So typically, websites with a lot of DR are going to get, are, are going to perform the world best during these updates, especially when Google's trying to differentiate between each sites. One thing that I've seen in terms of negatively affecting sites is actually, if you look at their updates, it's, it's all about scaled content, right? So Google announced three different things inside their core updates announcements. So they talked about three things, right? Which is let me find it right here on the scale content update. Here we go. Yeah, so if you look at this particular announcement from Google that came on March the 5th, you can see there's three things they're trying to remove from the search results, right? And one of those is scaled content abuse, which makes me think, and this is just a theory because it's very, very early days right now, but potentially they could be targeting content velocity, right? So if they see that a lot of websites are publishing content at an unnatural frequency, 
and publishing maybe like a thousand blogs a day or something crazy like that, then those sites potentially could get hit algorithmically by this new update because Google is scaling, uh, are targeting scaled content abuse. The other thing that has been hit is site reputation abuse, so a lot of directories and that sort of thing. And then additionally, the other thing that Google are going after is expired domain abuse, right? So people buying expired domains and then trying to rank quicker using that process. Scott Friedemann says Forbes. Yeah, let's check Forbes traffic and we'll see how they're performing. Obviously, massive brand, DR94, which is insane. And probably they're doing pretty well after this situation. However, yeah, so you can see like their traffic has increased between the last month. You can see they're at 71 million, day before 69, and the traffic is increasing by like a million a day. Now, who knows what's going to happen in terms of the site reputation abuse update, because that's not going to get published until May the 5th. That's not going to get pushed out, right? So it'll be interesting to see what happens, because that's basically targeting websites that are using directories to publish content at scales. And coding, Shiksha says, how can we rank a single page tool based websites such as MP4 to MP3? Do we need to create more pages for that? So if it was me and I'm trying to rank on Google for any sort of keyword, I would just look at like, okay, um, what sort of keywords are pretty easy to rank for on Google, right? So if you look at this particular keyword, MP3 to MP4, it's pretty hard to rank for. So you just want to find something easier that, that's more achievable in terms of ranking your tool. So how can you do that? Well, if you filter down to KD minimum five, you'll see a bunch of other opportunities right here that you can rank for, right? So for example, like how to turn MP4 into MP3, YouTube, MP4 to MP3, et cetera. These are like DR zeros and much lower keyword difficulty keywords to rank for, which means you've got a much higher chance and then just create the content and, and go from there. If you wanna learn how to create content, I would highly recommend the SEO checklist. This is inside my free chat GPT SEO course. And it basically guides you through step-by-step -step how to manually edit your content and make it the best it can possibly be, right? So you create content, whether you're generating it with AI or whether you're generating it with humans, Google already said either way is fine, but the main thing is you turn it into quality. So how do you do that? You can use a content quality checklist like this. Scott says, did you know Forbes are experts in every niche? I mean, Obviously they are, right? Like from checking this traffic and yeah, drip feeding content. That's that's one way that people are probably getting around the scaled content of you situation. And Pixel Drop says, so did all your websites get hit? No, I have over a hundred websites that didn't get hit. Uh, it was just a, a manual action penalty that I received. And I talked about that on the live stream. So yeah, just gonna, gonna keep learning SEO and keep testing new things. Let's have a look what else we've got here. Jason says, anybody realizes how dang fast Julian types and switches between tabs and windows? I swear I hear one click and a few things happening. Yeah, so I think I've just used a laptop and my setup for so long. And also I know that when I'm doing a YouTube live like this, I have to keep attention really fast, right? So I try to move as fast as I can and talk as fast as I can as well during the live, just to keep people entertained and to provide as much value while I've got people's attention, right? So if I've got someone's attention, I wanna reward them for it. And Mohammed Abdullah says, what if we generate 300 articles and schedule it to automatically publish two to three blogs per day? Will that be okay to go with? I actually think I can't talk about this stuff publicly anymore. So I'm not gonna talk about it, sadly. Um, I do have a, a private SEO mastermind, but yeah, I, I think anything related to scaling content, I just, I can't talk about anymore, sadly, due to the situation. So coding, Shiksha says, let's suppose I am making a static blog site generated by next.js. So I guess that's a JavaScript. Should I release a website containing a hundred blogs Will this be affected because of scaled content abuse? Honestly, when I'm talking publicly on videos like this, I can't really talk about scaling content or anything like that. So I'm just, I'm, I'm going to avoid talking about those topics uh, simply because of the situation. But yeah, I would say just, you know, what I have to say publicly, I guess, is like, make sure you edit your content step by step. Use the SEO checklist. Make sure there is quality before you publish it and just go from there. You know, when you're publishing, I would make sure as well that you're publishing at a natural rate that, that helps everyone. Scott says, you're really good at it, Julian. Thank you very much. I think that's from playing guitar and multitasking a lot. And she Jones says, Julian, our last live discussions, you have shared screen. New website takes three months after traffic. My website got ranked 
on last month, but after this core update, March the 6th, keywords are dropping. So I'm sorry to hear that, but I think the with the Google core update, it's going to take a while to roll out, right? We're only like a one week into it and it could potentially take a month. And then there's going to be the Parasite SEO update as well coming May the 5th. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens next. And I think it's pretty early days. <laughs> Katie says, does John Mueller hate you? I don't think so. I don't, I don't think there's any personal resentment there. So I hope not. Anyway, I have no resentment towards anyone. And this YouTube channel is all about good vibes and positivity. Jim Wells says two to three blogs per day will be fine as long as it's useful content that your reader would actually want to see. I think that's 100% it. It's like if, if your content quality is good, then you'll be good as well. It's, it's one of those things where you do want to quality control everything that you publish if it's a website that you really care about. And again, you can use that SEO checklist that's inside my free course. Additionally, if you want to learn how to do keyword research, make sure you check out the video from earlier today where I basically talk about free SEO keyword strategies that you can use to rank number one. And it basically talks about five different strategies that you can use to get free keywords for your website. So that's basically it. And Jacob Bear says, what websites will hit of yours and can you explain so we can avoid them? So if you want to learn more about that, I would highly recommend checking out this live stream. Where is it right now? This one right here definitely check that out. Like basically I talk through it in depth. You can see it's a 23 minute YouTube live. And I basically talk in a lot of detail about the whole situation, why it happened, what's going to happen in the future, etc. And coding Shisha says, can we expect YouTube to also release some kind of helpful quality and scaled content abuse update so that videos will also be judged based upon quality? Can this happen in the future? Yeah, I don't see many I don't see many updates in the same way that Google updates. And I, that's a really interesting point. What I would say is like, if you look at the actual algorithm on YouTube, typically it, it does recommend really good content. Like the quality of content that you get recommended is typically like the top 1% of content that actually is very, very useful. And I think the algorithm on YouTube is amazing, like in terms of picking the best quality content. And I think, why is that? I think it's because it's all about user engagement, right? So it's like, how long do people watch? and what percentage of people actually click on the video. And therefore, the listings on YouTube are pretty amazing when you look at the opportunities. Julian, can you make any side hustle videos? I'm gonna make another one soon on ChatGPT side hustles and that sort of thing, so that'll be an interesting one. And Zane says, appliance repair services to keep your household running smoothly. I'm not sure about that one. <laughs> Scott says, you look like you saw a ghost that day. I'm not gonna lie, I was, it, it was a tough situation, honestly. It was a little bit scary, but it's one of those where you're like, okay, I'm just gonna clean up all the content publicly. I'm gonna make sure that I don't discuss anything that you know some people wouldn't approve of publicly on my YouTube channel. And I'm gonna make sure that I give as much value and create, create as much positivity as I can in the world. So it was a tough day, I'm not gonna lie to you, but I think that you learn from it and you make sure that you, you adapt going forward in terms of your content strategy, in terms of what videos you put out there, et cetera. And so everything on this channel really in the future will be super clean. Like it's, it's gonna be about keyword research, topical maps, editing content, quality control, et cetera. A lot of stuff that people are really interested in, but still leveraging AI, but to, to create and output content at a much higher level. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. It's gonna be exploring a different side of AI SEO that I haven't explored that much in previous videos. Let's go through this now. So Super Spanish says, which AI content generator can you recommend, Koala or Autoblogging or your ones? So, I mean, I've had success with all of these tools, right? I think Autoblogging does a really good job, but the main thing here is to bear in mind that always edit the content before you publish it, right? So edit it step by step, use that checklist I showed you earlier, and you go from there. <laughs> Shout out to Philip Stone, who is, a, he's one of my best mates from Manchester and he's been on this journey with me from day one. So shout out to him, appreciate him watching. And uh, he says, I'm the F in Bentley. So if you've never seen that video, you won't know what he's talking about, but that is a Dan Lock video from a few years ago where basically someone is on a sales call. So shout out to Phil, thanks for watching. We actually still have an audio book business together and that is still flying years later. It's absolutely crazy. 
Pixel Drop says, so you won't be sharing any sites from now on. What's next? So for me, I have a list of things I can publicly talk about. I've got a list of things I can't publicly talk about. And then I'm just going to focus on the super clean stuff that I can speak publicly about on my YouTube channel. And then if you want to learn other stuff, then you can. And if you want to learn about that stuff, you can check out my SEO coaching mastermind where we share more openly. Jim Wells says, rule of thumb for several years, each important site gets its own Google account and GSC, then set up manager accounts to manage them. This reduces the risk of all sites getting hit. This is an interesting one. I think, honestly, that was one of the things I learned from this whole situation was just, just be a lot more careful in terms of how you set things up, right? And that's not just for me, but it's for everyone, right? And so if you can set up things in a way where you're more protected and you diversify your sites in terms of how they're set up on Google Search Console, or Google Analytics, which email accounts are attacked to, um, attached to them, even where you store your documents, right? So you want to be careful with all this stuff. And not just like if you're a public facing YouTuber, but just to protect yourself in the future. You never know what can happen. Scott says, you've diversified Goldie, so I know you're good. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, for me personally, like obviously, I think diversification is the name of the game. So we have a lot of websites, but also, I have a LinkedIn profile, Twitter with 15,000 followers, Udemy with 60,000 students, YouTube channel with 70,000 students, email list of 50,000 people, Facebook group of 6,600 people. It's like, I think you have to build a brand across everywhere, right? And that's how digital marketing should be done. And SEO is just one tiny little fragment of that whole piece of the pie. But the thing is, if you can improve all these channels and your branding, the backlinks you get, the PR that you get, the number of mentions, etc., all improves along the way. So, yeah, thanks very much. Coding says, appreciate how you take and answer all the comments. Appreciate you too. Thanks very much for watching. And Zane says, why the reason you choose me for your link insertion? I'm not sure what that's about, but if you want to email address, if you want to email me or whatever, feel free to me at juliangoldie.com and I'll try and help whatever that is about. Bright says, do you advise we continue using GSC as a result of the Google core update? So I think there's nothing wrong with using Google Search Console, right? Just for me, as I've always said, this is an experiment that I'm testing, which is removing Google Search Console across my websites. Now, why is that? I don't recommend it for everyone, number one. And number two, I think that it's just because of the situation that happened that I explained on the live stream. And so I won't be using uh, Google Search Console personally, but it's still a great tool for everyone out there. It's just, I'm not going to be using it. And you know me, like I like to be the guinea pig for everything. So it's good to test these things out and see what happens. Matthew says, yeah, this update will raise a bar for everybody. Yeah. And I think that that's a good thing, right? Like to raise the content quality, it's the same on YouTube. Like there's more and more people coming into the YouTube game, which raises the competition, but that's a good thing because it forces you to, you know, to perform at your best as well and take things to a whole new level. So I think it's a good time. And you know, if the, if the results on Google get better, then everyone's happy, right? Coding says, do you see ChatGPT and AI as the only reason why all these updates happening and traffic decline? I think that plays a big part, right? So I think that Google have to manage it right now in terms of how things are handled so that things don't get out of control, right? And there's a few different things going on. So I think that, that Google is just trying to, to fix things, but I don't necessarily think this is about AI. I think this is just about fixing the SERPs and making everything better quality. Now, AI does play a part in that, and it's important to make sure that, I, I guess for them, from their perspective, what they don't want is the whole web filled with absolute trash, and no one wants that, right? So if the content goes really bad, then you know it's, it's, it's one of those situations where no one's going to use Google anymore. And so they have to clean up now. They're probably doing the right things. And then from there, they can keep improving the SERPs and keep improving the quality of everything and all that sort of thing. By the way, if you're watching this, please do smash a like on it so that I can reach more people and the algorithm gets a bit of a spike. Coding says, what is your main source of income? Do you also do e-commerce and how much you earn from ads? So I actually don't run many ads apart from on my YouTube channel, obviously, because that comes with the monetization. We can make anywhere between like 50 and $250 per day on the YouTube ads, just running uh, monetized on my YouTube videos. So that's pretty good. And then my main source of income, I would say mainly my agency, 
But then, you know, obviously I have like 100 websites in the background and everything is kind of like an ecosystem that works together, right? So there are things in my funnel that, that help my agency, but my agency also helps me understand SEO better so that I can build my own websites and, and keep going from there. Zain Ali says, you will run 500 websites. Why you need link insertion? So I'm not sure what that's about, but basically the reason that I have an agency, again, is so that I can learn and diversify my income in terms of SEO and that sort of thing. Top GFX says, is Claude better than ChatGPT for AI content? All right, let's pull them up and we can check right now. So we can do a couple of things and compare them side by side in terms of the content creation. Now, I still personally prefer to use ChatGPT, but some people right now are switching over and going to other stuff, right? So I'm just going to share my screen right now. Here we go. And if we go on ChatGPT and Claude, the first thing that I would say, right, about Claude is that I don't really like the UI, right? So it's a great tool, very powerful tool. The content quality and the responses you get are nice. But actually, I don't like the UI so much. I don't think it's as easy to use. Whereas maybe I'm just used to it, but I feel like the, the UI on ChatGPT is a lot better. Now, I think in terms of the responses, probably they're going to be at a very similar level. But one of the cool things that you can actually do with Chat GP, uh, with Claude, sorry, is you can actually give it pictures and then it can create content from those pictures, right? So for example, I was watching Niche Pursuits YouTube video from yesterday and they were talking about how can you create more unique content that's more helpful for people? Well, you can take images of your products or stuff that you're reviewing and then you can post that onto Claude and ask it to, to actually take that picture and then generate some content off the back of it. And that would make your content more useful. So I think if you're playing around with pictures, Claude is probably better than ChatGPT Vision. But in terms of just overall use, I still prefer ChatGPT and that's what I'm used to. So yeah, that's it basically. Ollie Bibi says, hi Julian, what software is worth its money to use for readability and SEO content improvement, please? That's a really good question. So. For this, I would say for readability, hmm, interesting one. I mean, you can actually just use like the Yoast plugin on WordPress. That's a free tool and it actually scans your content for readability and gives you a score for your content, right? And so when you've got that readability score, you can easily see how to improve it. Now, another tool that's really good for this is Hemingway as well. And additionally, Grammarly as well is pretty good. And Grammarly just cleans up everything, obviously. By the name, you can imagine it, it cleans up the grammar too. So yeah, I would say go with Yoast uh, in terms of readability, go with Hemingway, that's pretty nice for cleaning up the readability. And then additionally go with other tools like for example, Grammarly. Now, the other thing that I would say with that is if you wanna improve your content, then you can run it through a content analyzer. For example, like NeuronWriter or Page Optimizer Pro is another good one. Uh, even Surfer you could use. And then you can just put your content into there analyze it based on the SERPs and it will give you a content score and you can gradually improve the content and tweak it based on that. Wasim says, can you make a video on semantic SEO details video because nowadays semantic SEO works in how to write content without ChatGPT. I actually really like the idea of that, how to write content without ChatGPT. Yeah, I, I could definitely create a video on that for sure. In terms of semantic SEO, I wouldn't say I'm the expert, but what I can actually do is because I have such a good network of people, for example, like I'm supposed to be doing a podcast soon with Corey Tuckberg. And so I think this would be really interesting to talk about on the channel. And if I can learn from my from my network and, and give you as much value as possible, then yeah, sure. Let's create a video on it. Why not? I've got some content on YouTube about entity SEO. So that might be quite useful for you as well. But yeah, hopefully you find that useful too. Rogue says, I have a UK-based education site with an RPM on AdSense of 0 0.97. Does that seem low? Yeah, that seems very low. Honestly, if I look at some of my Mediavine sites, I'm just going to try and pull up the CPN right here. Let's have a cheeky gander. Just searching for that in the background. Yeah, so ARIA RPM on a, like a, a website in the pets niche is $12.84. Right. So if you're getting a RPM of 0 0.97, that seems pretty low to me. I'll be 100% honest with you. Benit says, how is Twitter Grok AI for content creation? 
actually, I'm not a big fan of Grok AI for content creation, but I can pull it up and I can show you what it's like. One of the things that I do think it's useful for is actually getting details and stuff that's going on in real time, right? Now, Grok, it doesn't have access to like the tweets that happened five minutes ago, or 10 minutes ago. It doesn't have real live stream uh, content like that. But if you go into Grok on Twitter, and this is available in the premium account, what you can actually do from here is you can say like, okay, tell me, give me a breakdown of the latest Google Core update and what's happening in March 2024. Let's see if that works. I'm not 100% sure if that's going to work or not because it's so recent, but hopefully it will do. And I think this is one of the best ways to figure out, okay, what's going on right now? How can I aggregate all the data from Twitter in terms of posts and that sort of thing? And then from there, you can figure out, okay, what's, you know, what, what sort of stuff can you include in your content? So if you look at the way that it's generating and aggregating all the news in that industry, then it's going to be pretty useful for, for generating some research for your content and creating like some content outlines and even like briefing your writers, etc. But I wouldn't say it's great for creating content. It does have quite a good personality, but it's not perfect. And coding Shisha says, you are from the USA. Sounds like a British guy. I'm not from the USA at all, actually. I'm from sunny Manchester in the UK. So shout out to the British gang gang listening to it right now. But yeah, let's go. Mohammed says, hey, Julian, sad to hear about your sites. I'm sure you'll find a way to get back. Honestly, 100%, like, though, the, the impact of those sites was like absolutely zero, right? Because obviously I have a big portfolio of sites in the background and it didn't really, it didn't really impact me in that way. I would say it was a little bit like, strange the whole situation so that was probably the biggest impact but for me again just keep the positive vibes and that sort of thing and then wasim khan says i have a domain with my i have a exact match domain with my live site my website performance was good but after update zero impressions to zero clicks now can you share the tips for exact match domain ranking and emd still works or not so emd still works you know, if your content is good and that sort of thing, but if you've taken a big hit after the update, number one, if, you, if you've got zero impressions to zero clicks right now, I would highly recommend checking whether your site has been de-indexed. And you can do that by typing site colon and then your website into Google and figuring out whether your website has been de-indexed or not. But it sounds like you've been hit in some way. And the thing I would say here is that it's really early days, right? So I can't say you're going to recover your site or here's how to recover your site. Also, bear in mind, the core updates are not like one thing. So if you get hit in this update, it might take you six or nine months until the next core update to actually recover because it's, it's such a sort of holistic update. Let's keep going now. We've got a question from Abdul Ralph who says, what would be the single most important task would you do to recover any website, not de-indexed but de-ranked? What I would look at, I mean, it's a tough one. One of the first things I would look at is like, genuinely, is your content good enough? And then from there, just build out a plan for the pages to improve. Now, one of the things that a lot of people are talking about right now is content pruning as a way to recover your website. Now, this is not like an instant fix and it takes a long time, but essentially what you would do is you would look at the pages that are not getting traffic after a helpful content update or after a core update. And from there, you can prune your site in terms of the removing or just de-indexing the pages that don't get any traffic anymore, and then just keeping the pages that Google obviously sees as good quality. Um, what that will do over time is you create a website where the only pages that are indexed are the ones getting traffic, and therefore the overall quality grade of your website is going to improve. That's one of the best ways to deal with that. I've hope, heard multiple SEOs manage that really well. I saw that Authority Hacker talked about it recently as well, and yeah, that, that's one thing you could look at, but it's really early days. So, so just go from there. Jaden says, how often do you use Claude? Typically, I find myself using it more and more often, right? So previously, I would just use it like once a month just to make a video that was interesting about it. But recently, it's been more and more. Yeah, way more. And Jaden says, the responses sound more natural and helpful in my review. And uh, what... And helpful in my review. Yeah, this is one thing I've heard is like, actually, it's a lot more sentient. 
explored. That's what a lot of people are saying. I didn't really feel that when I was creating content and testing it out. But yeah, that, that's an interesting one that you say it does feel a bit more natural. A lot of people have said as well that it's actually more powerful in some ways versus ChatGPT4. Again, I'm yet to see that in the responses that I got, but yeah, it could be interesting from there. What are your top three AI writers? If you want to check out my best AI writers, then I would check out my list of best SEO tools in the comments right there. And you can just check out that page and, and go from there. Alcan says, my website was hit by a spam update in 2022. and never made any changes and got recovered in 2023 during the October 2023 update. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, it does take a long time to recover a website. Some websites that didn't get any traffic before got absolutely obliterated in a previous update. Sometimes they just recover like a year later and it just takes time. Matthew says pruning will reduce keyword cannibalization too. Yeah, that's the other thing. If you, the, the other thing that I would say is like when you're pruning content across your website, it's an interesting one because a lot of people especially if they're generating content at more scale than maybe they should be, is that they're going away from their core topic, right? Because they're running out of things to talk about or they're rushing the keyword research, et cetera. And so if you prune the content down to only the pages that actually get traffic and then you either de-index the pages that don't get any traffic or you remove them completely, that would make sense. It removes, it reduces keyword cannibalization, it keeps the content more on topic and also improves the quality of your whole site in the eyes of Google because these are only pages that are getting traffic and ranking. Jake says, once the dust settles, what's your recovery plan for cheaper birds? Honestly, that's it. I think that's it for cheaper birds. Like it took a hit, it was a great ride. I always said it could get de-indexed from from day one and it was a bit of an experiment but yeah that's that's it for that website sadly matthew says to be honest claude 2.1 was much more natural than it is today it's gone more the route of gpt4 with the latest update yeah a lot of people say that gpt4 as well is decreasing in quality over time so that's an interesting one but let's see i mean for me personally i'm still sticking mostly to chat gpt4 and then we'll go from there but i'm still going to make more videos about perplexity and claude etc i think it's important to look at other stuff the other good thing that i've heard things about is mistral and i don't know if anyone watching this check that out but yeah it's quite interesting and Alcan says, my website was hit by a spam update in 2022. Okay, we've already read that one out. Wasim says, most of your sites hit in Google Update have recovered or not. What about these sites? Google did not index. I've got a click impression. Should I wait two weeks? I don't know. It's a little bit hard to read that one out. I'll be 100% honest with you. But what I would say is for me personally, like none of my sites really got hit in this Google update. It was pretty crazy. So my portfolio of sites in the background, totally fine. The only sites that got hit were the ones that received the manual penalty, but that's one of those, isn't it? And Matthew says, if you have a number of pages competing for the same page, Google will forever be juggling them and never actually rank any of them to their full potential. Yeah, that makes total sense to me. Like for example, if you've got three different variations of basically what is the same search intent. So for example, like, I don't know, can cats eat bananas? Are bananas safe for cats? Do cats like bananas, something like that. And let's say they're all the same search intent after you've done your research. If you have three different pages, they're never going to rank as well as just having one, right? And so you would just try and minimize having one page, rank that, and then potentially if you want to get rid of the other two, you can de-index them or unpublish them and then redirect them to the, the only page you actually want to rank. Coding says, do you believe in the theory content is king and link building doesn't affect in ranking? No, I think, I mean, for me, I like to focus on facts over opinions. One of the best case studies that you can check out when it comes to link building is one that I'm going to pull up right now. Let me find it right here. And it's pretty crazy, this result. But basically, it shows the power of link building and, and just how many sites are performing well. But if you look at the websites that are performing well right now, like we showed Forbes, for example, getting like a million extra traffic per day from what it's doing, you'll see that it's a DR94 website, right? So it's getting a ton of traffic, a ridiculous amount of traffic, and it's also got a ton of DR. Right? It's got a ton of backlinks pointing to it. And so if you look at this Ahrefs case study, which is really powerful, you can see that it looks at around 14 billion pages, 14 billion pages, absolutely insane. 96.5% of content gets no traffic from Google, right? Now, why is that? If we scroll down here, and we'll find it right now, 
one of the top reasons is that the page has no backlinks, right? And so as you can see right here, they talk about backlinks and how powerful they are. They talk about the correlation between a page's traffic and the backlinks pointing to that site. And so it's just a clear correlation right there based on a case study of 14 billion pages, which is very, very in-depth. By the way, if you're liking this, please do smash a like on it, and I hope you find it useful. So Marco says, what have you changed on your recipe after the new Google updates? Quite a lot, I would say, inside of the content quality checklist, just because I want to I want to make sure the content that I show on my channel stays on point in terms of what I think they're looking for, which is I think is like more manually editing content, focusing on quality, focusing on checking content before you publish it. And so, yeah, just improving the SEO checklist that I've done along the way. And then in terms of SAPs, like the ones I'll be doing in the future are more about like keyword research, keyword clustering, sticking to the safe topics, right? Making sure that we talk about how to manually edit content, testing new AI models, looking at new workflows that aren't necessarily about creating content, but about the other types of ways you can use AI to, to create content that just makes it more useful and better quality. I think that's one of the best ways to look at this now and, and make sure that we improve everything along the way. So Mike says, do you think there is still value in the domains that got the index? We sell the domain. I think for now, we're just going to leave it. And Wasim says, you are my teacher. You're the best teacher I've ever found on YouTube. And it's my wish to meet you. Well, I hope I do meet you. And thanks so much. Like, that's made my day. That's a super kind comment. So yeah, thanks so much. And Alkin says, do you think using same themes could possibly be the reason we got hit? I have five websites using the same theme. And they all got hit except for one which uses a different theme. I would be careful of correlation versus causation, right? So it's an interesting idea and makes total sense to me. But one thing you want to be careful of in these sort of updates is that we all get like the confirmation bias as humans. That's our human mind. And so sometimes we have a tendency to correlate stuff that makes sense but actually doesn't work. So when I look at particular when I look at like data sets, for example, if I'm like analyzing two different thumbnails. I'll try and make sure on YouTube that if I'm going to make a split test, I get at least a thousand impressions on both thumbnails. And if you were trying to find a correlation in terms of the Google update, you also want to look at a sample size of at least a hundred to make it statistically relevant, but ideally a thousand, if not more, maybe even a hundred thousand if you can, but that data takes a long time to come out. So it's probably too early to really figure out, okay, what are the reasons that some sites got hit and some didn't? One thing I would look at is like, okay, are you hosting them all on the same place? Do they all have the same IP address? Is there like quite a, a correlated footprint across each of these sites? Just be careful with that. And Johnny9 says, so will you stop using Google Search Console or a new email for each site in the future? Yeah, just I'm not going to use Google Search Console anymore. That's it. Over and done with. And I might switch back to that in the future, but it's just for now I'm not going to on most of my sites. There is one site that I want to try and get back, and I'm working on it, but let's see. So I'm keeping Google Search Console in there. But again, I don't recommend this to everyone. It's just for me, just for me as an experiment, and also just to play things safe. Abhinav says, as per my test, there is no conclusion. One thing has worked out for someone, and that's not for other everything is full of contradiction. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, a lot of people at first were saying like, oh, it's, it's only sites that are published in that scale. But then actually you see a lot of human sites have got hit. And then some people say, well, it's just because of AI content. But actually, again, a lot of sites with expert writers and big teams got hit as well. So I don't think there's any big correlation. But what I would say is across the board, if you look at what Google announced, they're targeting three things, right? Which is scaled content and site reputation abuse and additionally expired domains. That's what they specifically said they're targeting. And additionally, on top of that, they've they've released a core update which holistically affects the site. Grow with Manoj says, what's your thoughts on AI? Divine will take developers' jobs. What will AI do to SEO industry? I think if you look over the last 12 months, like for example, the impact that ChatGPT and AI had on content agencies last night, last that's not last night, last year, it was absolutely insane. I've never seen anything like it. It totally changed the industry in a matter of months, if not weeks. And so it's just a case of constantly adapting 
And I think you've got to learn quicker. You've got to be able to pivot quicker than you ever have before. Kind of like in the same way that within a few days, I've totally changed my content strategy on the channel to make sure that I can still deliver value in a way that I can do it publicly, right? And so, yeah, I think it's it's all about making sure that you just pivot. Now, it might take some developers' jobs, which is sad, but I think it's all about learning how to give more value than AI does, right? So if you look at the best developers in the world, they're not going to be worried because they're looking at ways that they can use AI and leverage it to produce at a higher output than they were previously. And therefore, their value as a developer has actually increased as they learn to leverage AI and learn to use it better. And I think that's the same for even content writers, right? So if you're a content writer and you can leverage AI in a way where you can create like an insane amount of high quality content that's very, very useful for the user, then you've got no issues there. You've got nothing to worry about. In fact, I think that comes at a premium. Coding says, have Google SERPs improved? Have you noticed some improvement post this update? I haven't really checked, honestly. I don't do, uh, from what I've seen, it's just been very, very volatile. I know a lot of people have been complaining. A lot of people have been quite noisy in terms of negativity. But for me, I'm just going to wait for the rollout to, to come. And I think it's going to change as well on May the 5th quite a lot too. Aviza Torret says, I lost a lot of traffic from Google Discover with the update. Why? It might be that they're just testing different things, right? So a lot of people saw a reversal in terms of the traffic went down and then it went back up the next day. So let's see what happens. Sanic Blog says, if you will not use Google Search Console, then how you index your site in Google? So, I mean, even if you're not in Google Search Console, your site can be indexed, right? So there are all these indexes out there. And additionally, it's, it's quite easy to measure analytics with Ahrefs or being and that sort of thing. Noosa says, Google is rolling out SGE in 2024. Do you think how much traffic will be lost by the end of the year? It depends how good SGE is, right? So what we can actually do is I can pull up my Google and I'll show you what SGE is like if you haven't played around with it already. And we can look at some use cases plus how this is going to impact the industry. I have a few ideas myself. It'll be interesting to see what you watching will think as well. So for example, if we say like, what is SEO? And hopefully search generative experience pops up. Okay, so here it does, right? And so this is the beta version, the experimental version of generative AI. So search generative experience from Google, basically kind of like their version of ChatGPT, but it's built into the Google Search Console. So one of the first things I would say is that if it's a answer that requires some more in-depth analysis, for example, like what is SEO, I don't think that most people will be satisfied with the answer, which means that they're probably for now, not going to stay on Google, they're still going to click through to one of the top listings right here, right? So I still think there's potential, but it's all about ranking right here. And how do you rank right here? Well, if you look at these potential websites like Later and Marketing Miner, these are big brands, right? These are brands with a lot of authority. And therefore, if you want to rank in the top, it's all about backlinks. It's all about building the brand, right? So in the same way that I've created so many different social media channels for my brand, I would recommend that if you're running a website, think about it more in terms of branding and think about it more in terms of, okay, how can I build my authority across every channel? Because if you're not featured right here, then no one's going to find you. I don't think anyone's going to scroll all the way down here. And so it's all about the top three listings. What's quite interesting about this result is there's no thumbnails. So previously, SG used to show thumbnails, but now it's not. So it must have changed quite a lot right there. They've, they've done some changes. And LM10 says, what's your opinion on Bing search? I think it's time to think about Bing. Yeah, I think Bing has a lot of value, especially if you're targeting like baby boomers. If you don't know what baby boomers are, right? It's a generation of people. I want to make sure I get this right. So yeah, they're, they're a generation of people between the end of World War II and the mid 1960s, right? And basically the demographic of Bing.com is typically an older audience, right? And so if you have an older audience, let's say you've got a website about how to retire or how to plan your pension, et cetera, then Bing is an awesome source of traffic. And so that's quite an interesting one to look at. Scott says, I'm pivoting so hard. I did. I dug a hole under me. <laughs> okay. Sounds like you're doing a lot of pivoting right now. And Alkin says, I somehow feel Google doesn't want to come out publicly say that they are against AI content. Yeah, I mean, actually, if you look at their 
I don't know if you ever checked out their guidelines, right? So Google have some guidelines on AI. I'm just going to try and find that right now. But basically, they actually say that the kind of not all for AI content, but they do say it's totally okay, right? So I'm just going to pull this up right now. So if we open this up, right, they say that they reward high quality content, however it is produced. And so they haven't said that AI content is bad. Right. And this is within Google search guidance about AI generated content. Now, if you look at SG, it's actually generating AI responses on the first page of Google. So it seems like even they're using AI to generate listings on the search engine. And I think that Google is one of the biggest companies in the world when it comes to AI. But whatever you do, if you look at the way that they reward content, it's about original and high quality stuff, right? And that's mostly what the channel is going to be out in the future. But basically, if you can demonstrate qualities of EEAT inside your content, however it's produced, whether you use AI, whether you use humans, then that's probably how you win long term. And, and so they even say that automation is okay, right? So they say using automation, including AI, to generate content with the primary person. Manipulating rankings is bad, right? But what they've also said is that uh, not all use of automation, including AI generation, is spam. So they've said not all AI is spam, but automation can be used to generate helpful content, such as, for example, sports scores, weather forecasts, and transcripts, etc. So that's quite an interesting one as well. And if you look at YouTube, for example, they generate a transcript for every single video automatically. And therefore, AI is quite... It's quite a useful way to do SEO if you have the right workflows. And I think they're just focusing more on quality so that these SERPs don't get flooded with trash, which I can totally imagine. I'm just conscious of time. So we're going to end it pretty soon. Matthew says adapt and overcome. Absolutely. And you got my money says, Julian, have you ever thought about going fully all in on local SEO ranking rent? It seems Google doesn't apply the same rules and the algorithm penalties do not seem to apply as such. Yeah, I mean, I've heard mixed things, right? So, for example, rank and rent in the organic listings, for example, just ranking locally for different organic listings, pretty easy, pretty easy. And I also see like it's less volatile, it's easier to rank, less people go for it, less competition, etc. When it comes to the Google Map listings, I don't touch them at all. I don't really worry about those really. But yeah, I think there's loads of opportunities in local SEO and rank and rent right now. Jake says, have you been keeping up with the autoblogging punch sites project? I, yeah, I, I can't talk about it publicly, I guess. That's the thing. And Matthew says they're just against idiots using AI. Yeah, I think that's probably, I don't think they can put that in the AI content guidelines, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much it, isn't it, right? Like, they just don't want the internet to be flooded with trash, and that makes total sense to me. Like, why not do something about that? And Abadav says, hey, Julian, has any of your money sites been hit up by the update? How to maintain a good mindset in the unstable situation like the present updates? All right, two good questions there. So number one, have my money sites been hit by the update? Only the ones who got manually de-indexed. Talked a lot about those already, so everyone knows about that already. But yeah, my site's in the background, totally fine. When it comes to maintaining a good mindset, there's an amazing book on this by Ryan Holiday called Stillness is the Way. And I would highly recommend anyone watching this because if you're running a business, or you're running a website, there's going to be a roller coaster ride and there's going to be ups and downs along the way. And really what I think the game is about is purely a mental game. Right. And so you have to maintain your stillness, maintain your peace and and really switch off. Right. So some of the things that Ryan Holiday recommends in that book, for example, number one, reading, number two, journaling, number two, number three, like just enjoying a bit of silence, number four, being active. And I think you just have to master your own mind. Right. So, for example, if someone sits there and they're just refreshing Twitter and they're just like clicking crazy on the Twitter refresh feed button, then they're going to go crazy. Your emotions are going to get the better of you, like just like they would for me if I was just checking Twitter constantly and refreshing the page. So I think it's just about finding some stillness, you know, shutting down your laptop occasionally, going out for a walk, going to the gym, spending time with friends. These are all the best ways to maintain peace, whether it's an update, whether it's something in your business, whether it's something in your personal life. Just, just try and keep it peaceful. Sonic says, does AI generated content rank on Bing? It does, absolutely does. Matthew says, appreciate the discussion. Thanks very much. 
And GJ says, why don't you bother with maps, buddy? It's a great business opportunity. Yeah, I think like maps are actually really, really good, but I just don't touch them because they kind of seem like a totally different algorithm, right? And so I want to focus just on the organic for now. And then, yeah, I don't really talk about it. I just think they're two different algorithms and I don't want to focus on both. I think if I want to master SEO at any level, then I should focus on organic for now and just do that. And Jake says, no props, thanks for your time. You better get going. It's late for you. It is getting late now, I'll be honest with you. And HHD Software, by the way, thanks, Jake, for watching and everyone that's watching. And HHD Software says, hey, Julian, always stuck in backlinks building your feels lost. Any easy and better way to find good backlink opportunities? Link building is tough. Like, it is undeniably a really tough game. And it takes a lot of grind, takes a lot of determination, takes a lot of patience. And so I would just say, give yourself time, right? So it's not going to happen overnight. And ideally, what you want to do is just focus on it for 90 days and crack the code on it. Now, in terms of the ways that I like to build backlinks, I just like to build backlinks to content, right? So we'll create a highly linkable asset. And then we'll promote that to get backlinks because it's a good piece of content and because we can get backlinks to it. By the way, if anyone's watching this and they want to learn more about that, feel free to book in a free SEO strategy session. And additionally, check out my free chat GPT SEO course that is focused, that has different topics, including link building inside the course. So feel free to check that out. And yeah, that's basically it. In terms of automated emails for outreach, there are different ways to do this. I, I don't really know if I can talk about it publicly as well. And I genuinely don't know what I can and can't talk about these days. But yeah, from what I've heard, still works. And yeah, that's pretty much it. In terms of ranking changes, yeah, there's, there's been all sorts of volatility in the SERPs. You can use SEMrush's volatility SERP measure to figure that out. And yeah, that's basically it for me. So thanks so much for watching, everyone. If you do want to get a free SEO strategy session, feel free to book a call links in the description and if you want to get my free chat gpt seo course you can get that links in the comments and description as well so thanks very much for watching appreciate it as always everyone thank you bye bye please don't forget to smash a like on it and cheers to everyone who's commented special shout out to martin Jaden, scott and everyone else who's commented so yeah can't say how much i appreciate you thanks bye bye